Hi everyone and welcome to this video. Um, today I'm going to discuss over-the-air updates in the Polestar 2 and what you can expect and how this feature works in cars like the Polestar. So um, yeah, what what does OTA mean? That uh, If you've been reading a bit about the Polestar 2, you'll probably have seen OTA mentioned. That means over-the-air updates. Um, and essentially that is a way to allow the manufacturer to update the vehicle and its software via via a form of wireless or, or mobile data system without you having to visit the dealership and have it done the traditional old-fashioned way. Now, the nice thing about having a system like this is it means that manufacturers like Polestar can push out new updates, new software versions and new features to a car with um, so much more ease than they would be able to achieve if they were doing it through the dealerships. So. What kind of things could you expect to see? Well, Tesla have been been offering over-the-air updates for quite some time. And uh, if you watch any of the Tesla videos, you'll see that there are quite a few things that they might bring out. A lot of these things tend to be software features that are seen on the screen, on the display, because those are the kinds of things that are relatively easy to um, to implement. But there are other things that a manufacturer could bring in, into play, like tweaks, for example, of how the software manages the battery system. So it, it could even mean a range improvements in the future, things like that. So there's a lot of scope with this. So before we have a look at uh, over the update in a little bit more detail, I'm just going to show you some of the new features of the updated software. So if you um, if you have a, a Polestar that you've had for a while and hasn't been in for the recall, um, you might still have the one of the earlier software patches on your Android display. So I'm going to show you what uh, version I have on my car and what has changed over the previous vehicle. So let's have a look at the display and I'll show you how to find your current software version. So on the display, if you're on this main page, the easiest way to find out what software you've got is to simply click on the, the four little boxes, go to the settings menu, click on system down at the bottom and click on about. And this will show you your Android security patch level and that date's important and the build number. Now if you have these two um, numbers that match up that means you you have the current and most relevant software update that was released at the beginning of November. So most people who are taking their cars in for their, um, their recall work to be done will hopefully come back with this feature implemented. In my case though when I took my car in and you might have seen this in the earlier video uh, for my my recall work to be done they didn't actually do this update so it's worth checking if you are having your recall work done make sure that you come back um, with this uh, this correct software installed so what can you expect to see well um, generally speaking if you're driving the car you're not going to really notice much of a difference but one of the most important implementations is to be found on the preconditioning page so let's just take a look at that now so to get to the preconditioning page, you can uh, bring up your air conditioning settings here and go up here to parking. And under parking, if you have one of the older software versions, you'll only have the option to start preheating and cooling now. But with this new update, you have the option to schedule this in. So I can set a timer if I like. So I'm going to say that I would like to schedule in, let's say, let's say I'm leaving for work at 8.30 in the morning. So we've got uh, set the time you want your pulsar to be ready for departure. So this is the departure time, not the time you want to start preheating. And let's say I want to do this every weekday and I want to repeat that weekly. And now I can click set timer and it will show the schedule time there to be 8.30 for every weekday. So that's a really nice feature to see that they've added. Now, obviously, when they add the app, for the Polestar, that will be even better because we'll be able to do that from the app rather than having to do it directly in the car. So the next feature that has been improved in the software update is the audio issue that uh, quite a few people mentioned. It's one of the first things I spotted on the car, to be honest, that um, when you optimize the sound for driver, it uh, it gives you um, it gives you the display showing the driver being in the left hand seat. So obviously that's set up for Europe, um, and they have now fixed that. So let's look at uh, how that's changed. So to get to the audio settings, you click on that button up at the top, and go to the settings option down here, and click sound. And then under the sound, you've got sound experience, which is this one, 
and now you can see that uh, setting up for the driver is correctly displayed as the driver in that um, seat and of course you've still got all seats and rear available but uh, yeah driver is now calibrated and if i'm honest it has made a big difference i almost always drive around now with a driver calibrated i think it sounds a lot nicer from a driver's perspective in that particular mode compared to the all seats mode Okay, so the third and final thing that seems to have changed with the software update is um, that uh, people have reported, I'm just looking down at my notes here, that pressing the button releases the charging cable even when the car is locked, as long as you have the key nearby. It is no longer necessary to unlock the car first to be able to release the charging cable. So that's interesting. I, I actually didn't test that out before. So to be honest, I haven't really noticed that as a change. Okay, so I'm going to try and uh, unplug the cable. I've got the car charging at the moment. I'm going to try first with the key not in my pocket and the car locked. And then I'm going to try it with the key in my pocket and the car locked and see if I can remove the cable. Okay, so we have the charging plug locked in place. Let's see if we can remove it. I don't have the keys on me at the moment. So yeah, it's locked. And if I press on the button, yeah, you can see nothing. Ha oh, there we go. It goes red. So yeah, it stops me from removing it. So that, uh, yeah, that's with the key not in my pocket and the car is locked. Okay, this time I've got the key in my pocket, but the car is still locked. So cable's locked in place. So I'm gonna press and hold the button. There we go, it goes yellow and I can unplug it. So yeah, that's really cool. There's a couple of other things that were reported on the Polestar forum. Um, someone said that they had noticed an improvement in the low light performance of the reversing camera, but it does say unconfirmed next to that. I haven't, I personally on my car, I don't think it's made any difference. The low light performance with the reversing camera is, I don't think it's even poor. It's just kind of non-existent. I cannot see a thing behind my car when I'm reversing. So that um, that is something that I would like Polestar to fix, but I, mean, I doubt that's, necessarily fixable by a software update unless it can rarely boost the gain of the camera looking back even if it was grainy i'd rather it was a grainy image and i could actually see behind the car um but yeah those are the key things that have changed in the november update which um you, you'll you'll either have if you've receiving your car now or if you um have taken your car in for the recall and it was correctly updated that's basically an overview of what can happen with this car and the uh, benefits of an over-the-air style updating system. So you can see that like, uh, you know, a software update could be rolled out very easily and give the user some new features, some bug fixes. Um, and the good news is that the cars are now ready for over-the-air updates that have been in for the recall work or are being delivered. And in fact, Polestar have started to roll these updates out. But um, I believe it's mainly in Sweden and Norway before they increase the scope around the rest of Europe. So. Uh, excuse me again, I'm looking down at my notes on my phone just to make sure I get this information right. So some of the, uh, uh, this is what's interesting, some of the updates that are coming out to people's car, um, well, the, the update will cover these items, is the climate control timer, activate the climate control to preheat your Polestar 2 from inside the car according to the desired schedule. Now that that is already on uh, our software update, so that's not an update, but it, perhaps it is for some of the cars in Sweden and Norway. Drivability improvements, when starting from a standstill, they include smoother brake release, um, some charging stability improvements, some improved range accuracy, um, stability improvements of the 12 volt battery system, connectivity improvements in stability, and apparently some rear window improvements that Im include a tighter seal against the glass. Now, if that's, if that's the case, and that's what Polestar said, that's really impressive because that shows that that this car is so intelligent in terms of its computing systems that, you know, being able to control what perhaps the, 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 the window closing system, the servers are doing, and being able to just tighten that seal by perhaps pushing harder against it is really cool that that can be controlled purely through something that's updated via the software. Um, but uh, I think the most interesting things really in that are, you know, improve range information. I think that will really help if, if that's been reprogrammed or recalibrated to be a bit more user friendly, then that's a really good thing. And of course, any any improvements are going to be welcome. In terms of when we'll see this in the UK, I'm not really sure. Um, Polestar haven't said when the rest of the world is going to get these kind of updates, but I don't think it'll be too long. I think that they seem to be very proactive in um, releasing these kinds of features. So it will be really nice to have these kinds of things rolled out. One thing I, I have to say that in my experience so far, Polestar have 
simply said, send over any information you have, any improvements or changes you'd like to see, and they all get logged within their data system. So I'm really hoping that they listen to their customers, which is exactly what Tesla did. I mean, Tesla implemented things like um, the option to leave your dog in the car or your pets in the car and have that display on the screen. I think that's really good. So some of those things, if Polestar do listen to their customers and implement some of those, those improvements and features, then, then that's gonna be really great for the future. So I hope this has been useful. This short video just explains what OTA updating is and where, where that system is at the moment with Polestar. And of course, if you could like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate that. And I'll see you again with another video very soon. Thank you.